The space shuttle is definitely one of the rockets of all time. It promised low cost compared to other rockets used used before and during the time, as well as frequent access to space and people living in space just becoming the norm or you know helping it at minimum. However, it failed to lower costs spectacularly, even raising them for some things. The cost wasn't the only issue with the space shuttle. The ship itself had a major flaw as well, which was the fact that there was no escape system for the crew. So the entire time that the solar rocket boosters are firing, the crew is in the hands of the shuttle. And if anything were to go wrong during this time, it'd be too risky to separate the orbiter, as the SRV's engines could severely damage the orbiter, and there'd be no possible way to implement a launch escape system without changing the design of this stack entirely. So you couldn't have a Apollo or Soyuz type launch escape system on the shuttle. Let's get into the real details. Let's get into how the space shuttle was made and how. Around October of 1968, NASA began researching and the design of a new concept of space rockets. Instead of a normal stack rocket such as the Soyuz, Gemini, Mercury, or Apollo rockets, they started thinking that, you know, space planes could work. But they just kept making concepts and no real actual spacecraft. After the Apollo program was brutally assassinated, they began to think of you know, slash design a real space shuttle concept. So finally, after years of making dumb little designs, here's a couple of them, they made the, the shuttle most people now adore and love. But the question is, is how did it start? They first made the shuttle Enterprise, named after the iconic Star Trek ship, it's funny. Eh. They did a total of 16 tests with it. The first three, they just kind of rolled around. The flights 5 through 11 flew on top of a Boeing 747, just attached there. But finally, on August 12th, 1977, the Enterprise shuttle detached from the very safe Boeing 747 and flew around like a little gnat or mosquito. So, it's cute. A couple years later, they finally made a real shuttle, the Columbia Shuttle, and launched it on April 12th, 1981, on the STS-1 mission. It had a bit of problems upon liftoff, which, I mean, for a test flight, it's not crazy to think. Uh, this included overbearing solid rocket booster pressure, um, where the pressure from ignition created a high pressure wave that kind of really pushed the orbiter structure to its limits, so that's fun. A lot of words I don't understand very well, but, you know, physics or something. And, you know, the space shuttle was hailed as a spacecraft. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like, people just love that, just love it so much, don't they? Like, I mean, if it's so popular and everyone loves it so much, it couldn't be plagued with that many problems, right? Well, let me quickly list ev every single major that I was able to find special incident. So besides the STS-1 um, overpressure uh, shockwave, we had STS-9, which had a leak, hi had hydrazine leak, had hydrazine leak, which is the fuel, which caused a fire and an explosion, so that's fun. Uh, on STS-51F, there was an engine failure. On STS-27, the thermal tiles were damaged more than usual by a significant enough margin. Thankfully, they lived. On STS-51, um, an uh, explosive release device, which you know, releases cargo by using, like, little pins, something, put a graphic up on screen, um, blew off and punctured the cargo bay door bulkhead. So, it's fun. Uh, on STS-83, the fu a fuel cell failed, and on STS-93, one of the main engines had an electrical short, and... 
have a bunch of problems as well a a pin that was supposed to keep not so much hydrogen from slamming into the main exhaust chamber fell loose puncturing a hole in the engine and the thing could have blown up because there was a couple other problems with it that would take an entire another video to describe i'll put like a video up in like the top right where you can learn more about that pretty interesting i actually hadn't heard of it but um you know almost blew up <laughs> not that not that crazy so and obviously you can't make a video talking about the space shuttle without mentioning the columbia or challenger disasters i mean obviously you can but I'm going to touch on them since we're saying how bad it is. So during the Challenger disaster uh, on the 28th of January 1986, the temperature was the lowest that they've had for a launch. Uh, 26 Fahrenheit to be exact, so that's definitely a temperature. Uh, this temperature caused an O-ring inside the right solid rocket booster, uh, which an O-ring keeps hot gases from escaping through the jointed segments of the solid rocket booster and it froze and snapped off. As a result, suddenly, 73 seconds after launch. The engines are running well. Two and a half minutes into the flight, the solid rocket boosters will drop away and we should be able to see it. What's happening? Still going. Vic, did something strange happen then? Something is gone amiss. Something is wrong. We have a problem. Nothing from mission control, but I could see pieces of something falling off the side as if one of the solid rocket boosters had come away early, Bob. The shuttle exploded, killing all seven people on board, including one civilian teacher that was supposed to go up there and you know, do science experiments for her class. On January 16, 2003, the space shuttle Columbia roared off the launch pad into the sky, but around 82 seconds after liftoff, a piece of foam from the left bipod section that held the orbiter to the tank chipped off and slammed into the left wing of the Columbia shuttle. The flight controllers noticed this, but chopped it up to nothing and let the mission go on normally. They stayed in space doing science experiments and research for about 15 days. Because there was no airlock, implemented and instead they had an orbital lab segment in the cargo bay there was no way to perform an eva and even if there was a way it wasn't planned meaning the crew was not able to see the extent of the damage on the wing and you know no one really realized how bad the damage really was after the deorbital insertion burn and atmospheric entry and during it the aerodynamic heating slowly chipped away at the hole in the wing, enough so that pieces started flying off, including the left OMS motor, until the left wing was completely ripped off. The shuttle went into a spin on over itself. It spun, it flipped out until the entire shuttle disintegrated and came apart, killing all the crew. Okay, now let's talk about a lighter topic. The two most famous things that the shuttle launched. The International Space Station, obviously not on one go, we'll get into that, uh, and the Hubble Space Telescope. I would hope you have heard of those. So... Eek! No! No, 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 no! I'll be doing that, mister. Mister. Mr. Mi uh, Mr. Mi Mr. Brister. <laughs> I beg up. The ISS, or International Space Station for long, was mostly assembled with a space shuttle after the Russian proton rocket launched the Zarya. What? Zar Zar Zara Zarya control module on November 28, 1998. The STS-88 mission launched the Unity node. And the ISS was fully inhabited with the Expedition 1 mission in November of 2000, and ended in March of 2001. And, on the STS-31 mission, the shuttle launched the Hubble Space Telescope, marking another historical achievement for the shuttle. Uh, what happened? Uh, I think it's time for a 
more in conclusion now. Uh, okay. So all in all, the shuttle was very costly, poorly designed, and had absolutely no way to bail out in case of an emergency. So, that's fun. And even though being called a reusable rocket, a couple bits just weren't, and I mean some bits which are pretty expensive, like the ceramic heat tiles, which had to be, you know, refurbished and checked every single thing, and a lot of them were replaced after each flight, so, I mean, the external tank, which got dropped off, and, you know, kind of burned up the atmosphere, or splashed down, and the SRBs had to be just completely stripped down, uh, inspected thoroughly before being restacked and refurbished, which cost a lot of money. So, yeah, the space shuttle was okay. I, it was iconic, sure, but it was just a dumb rocket to begin with. If, if it had actually lived up to its promises of cutting down the cost of spaceflight by a large margin, it might have been better. After the Apollo program was dead, I mean, immediately, all of a sudden, they're just like, guys, let's make the cheapest rockets possible, because that's good for the economy, and everyone will love that. I mean, yeah, I mean, just obviously, they didn't have enough money to make a rocket that was actually good. So yeah, the space shuttle kind of sucked. Title of the video, title of the video.